Hey there once again, YouTube. My name is Ben Ferriolo, and I'm back once again. Just real quick, so we do have a few things to talk about today, but first off, if you haven't already, please bookmark my website. A link is in the description box below, right under my email address. It can teach you a whole slew of different things, including how to find, access, and even analyze seismic and GPS deformation data to keep an eye on volcanic and tectonic hazard areas from the comfort of your own home. It can also teach you how to read the many different charts and plots that people use, and even contains a great many examples for a great many earthquake swarms and events. So check that out now if you wish. So just real quick, just a quick overview. We did have the only magnitude 6 in the past 24 hours, I believe, was a 6.2 near the Carlsberg Ridge. Just south, southeast Saudi Arabia, right here near Africa. Uh, ten, supposedly 10 kilometers in depth. Nobody felt it, but they do have a slight shake map. Likely nobody felt it because nobody is around in that area. We did have a magnitude 2.3, actually, in North Carolina. We're going to check that out in just a second. And then over here by the northern Mid-Atlantic Ridge, we had a 5.4 and then a 4.7. So nothing too major throughout the world, but Yellowstone did see an interesting increase in seismicity last night. Here's the page that I used just for simple, very quick overview. You notice you can see on many of these stations, especially YLT and Borehole 944, felt these events first. Notice we do have a slight earthquake swarm. I believe the largest was magnitude 2.5, and we'll look at this. It's been a while since we have seen a rapid fire swarm like this. These do happen around West Thumb, Shoshone, Lewis Lake, and Yellowstone Lake. All those lakes in that area do see these earthquake swarms every once in a while. Places like Maple Creek, you know, up in northwestern uh, uh, Yellowstone National Park, they do sometimes see events like these, but these are much different. I believe these every single time these rapid fire swarms occur, they are all part of the same process. Also, I do have a bunch of the past, uh, from 2018 through 2014, rapid fire swarms that have occurred around West Thumb Lake, Yellowstone Lake, Shoshone Lake, Lewis Lake, a Yellowstone Caldera. I detailed a lot of those. Just go to the Seismic Events drop-down menu and click on, what was it, West Thumb Yellowstone Energetic Swarms or something like that. And again, a link to my website is in the description box below, right under my email address. And you can see on many of these stations, many of them detected it. Uh, they occurred right down this location, but I'm not getting into that right now. I will in just a second. Let's zoom in. Remember in my last video, I talked about the seismicity in Hawaii and also in Nevada. We did see a slight increase in Nevada. And Washington State has seen just a couple earthquakes today, nothing too major. I believe just south-southeast of Mount St. Helens, there's a 1.1 at 8.1 kilometers in depth. Then up here near Bellingham, or Mount Ver Vernon, excuse me, there's a 2.0 at 20.8 kilometers in depth. Nothing too much else, a few threes, a few twos. But again, right over here near central Nevada, we are still seeing an interesting increase in seismicity. Um, a couple fours did occur the other day. And my last video, I talked about the magnitude 4.0, but I did not get to talk about the 4.2 because that happened well after I was done with the video. Utah did see one magnitude 2.1, supposedly at negative 2.9 kilometers in depth. But when I've noticed this from the University of Utah when they claim that there is a negative, remember 0.0, .0 kilometers in depth is sea level, right? So this should be 2.9 kilometers above sea level. Well, at one point, the ground level was lower than that. So that pretty much means the earthquake occurred in the air. We know earthquakes don't occur in the air, and it was not an airburst or a sonic boom or a meteorite boom. It was an actual earthquake. So whenever you see that and the elevation is wrong, know that the depth is likely incorrect as well. A few people did feel that. But I'm going to look at the North Carolina earthquake just real fast. It occurred right up here. I have the faults on. There's no known fault right here claimed by USGS, but I bet there are many many different faults in this area that they are just recently starting to discover. Have not done any research on that. Somebody else probably will. But I just want to look at the seismic data for this. Magnitude 2.3 at 2.0 kilometers in depth, just 6 kilometers west of Kernersville, North Carolina. If you felt this earthquake or if you heard it, please let me know in the comments section directly below. Only 7 people reported feeling it. And it didn't seem like it was too, too strong. But for a 2.3, that's interesting that many people felt it. Let's go to origin just real quick, shall we? Go to phases, click arrival time once. The closest station was U56A in the N4 network broadband vertical zero zero location code. Let's go take a look at that now in the program swarm. Here's U56A, the station U56A, for in the N4 network broadband vertical zero zero location code. I have persistent rescale turned off 
and overlap set to 95 and a 0 0.8 hertz high pass filter set to the eighth power. To get rid of those pesky background microseisms, it occurred this uh, made to 2.3 at 2.0 kilometers in depth in North Carolina, excuse me, occurred at about 723 UTC, took only a few seconds to arrive at this station, and we see it is this earthquake right here. Notice this, here are the waveforms, just real quick, of the P and S wave arrivals, P wave, and the S wave starts right about here, or so, right about there. But let's look at the entire earthquake, zoom out, looks like it lasted a good amount of time, Normal high range frequencies, but we do see dominant frequencies rest at, let's turn that off. Oh, log frequency off. Dominant frequencies rest at about 4.4 hertz or so, and also 8.1 hertz as well. And of course, we do have weaker frequencies going well, well beyond that. So it's not a low frequency earthquake of any kind. I, I like looking out for low frequency earthquakes. They are my favorite type of earthquake to analyze. And you can see it right here. This is the magnitude 2.3 in North Carolina. Here it is. Let me zoom in for you just to get a better look. Just a normal tectonic earthquake in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Now let's go back and take a look at the earthquakes at Yellowstone. So they are reporting nine earthquakes for Yellowstone today. Yellowstone the past month or two has been extremely calm in my opinion. Barely any earthquakes at all. I mean it's just been in my opinion too <laughs> Way too quiet. Just for earthquakes, though. And ground subsidence is still continuing at the caldera, regardless of what you hear from other people. Just You can even look at the GPS data yourself. I even teach you that on the how-to drop-down menu on my website on the GPS data page. Uh, that will teach you how to find your own GPS data so you can come to your own conclusions. But ground subsidence is still occurring at Yellowstone at a slow rate of a few millimeters per year, just like YVO has said. But I am thinking that is going to change soon, guys, because these episodes of Uplift, the past two episodes, I believe we're going to see another one in the next few years. Next two years at the maximum, in my opinion. That's just my opinion, guys. So let's go here. We did have a 0 0.9 near Maple Creek at 8.0 kilometers in depth. Then much earlier, we had a negative 0 0.4 at 9.1 kilometers in depth, and then a 0 0.7 at 6.3. That is not what I want to focus my attention on. Last night, there was a rapid fire swarm. And again, you can find many of the rapid fire swarms from 2018 through 2014 on my website uh, under the Seismic Events drop down menu on the West Thumb Yellowstone page. I detail in great detail how many of the earthquakes in those rapid fire swarms are not reported. So the actual reported seismicity is much lower than the actual seismicity. And I understand some of them cannot be located due to the P and S wave arrivals being smushed or mixed or whatever. But some of them were able to be located. They had to have been. And notice they're reporting only six for this earthquake swarm. And as you're about to see, there were more than six. And we'll take a look at the data from the closest seismic station in just a second. Note that it occurred down near Lewis Lake. Now, we're probably going to have to use Borehole 944, which resides right up here, because YPP and YMS are offline. Now, the swarm was not too major, guys. The magnitudes weren't too large, but the largest they were reporting was a 2.6. Now, usually for the earthquakes that are not reported during rapid fire swarms of Yellowstone, generally the magnitudes are below 1.5. I mean, it sucks. It's terrible. I really don't like how there's only like 5 to 10 percent of these swarms that are actually reported uh, of the earthquake content of the swarms. But I really think that they did get this one correct somewhat. And they also have a 0 0.2 right here. So they were able to locate some of the smaller earthquakes, but as you're about to see, some were not located, even though it looks like they should have been. But just moving on, guys. Just moving on down here near Lewis Lake. Again, YPP, actually, which one is it? Yep, YPP and YMS. Probably, I'm going to say YPP would have been the closest seismic station, probably. Don't know for that for sure. But these have been... I mean, they show that they're online, but the data streams are corrupted. Even when large earthquakes or large telesisms occur, you don't see them on these stations at all. That is because these stations are corrupted. And you can see that right here, especially if you go in the program Swarm. They really need to fix these stations. And these stations have not been working for the longest time, guys. Longest time. So right when the Swarm started, we did see a small earthquake and then the 2.6, as you're about to see in a minute. 2.6 at 3.0 kilometers in depth and a 1.7 to 5.1. A 2.3 at 3.8, a 0 0.2 at 2.1, and notice how it was kind of shallow, got a little bit deeper, and then started to shallow out at the end. And let's see the progression. 
So it's kind of back and forth, back and forth. You notice I look at the progression as I go through these. And then it's done. Let me go through it one more time. Very interesting. The progression of uh, this swarm is very odd. Again, I think a lot of these swarms that occur in this area are due to hydrothermal fluids or maybe brine or some type of magmatically derived fluids. I don't think it's magma itself. However, the 2008-2009 dike intrusion of Yellowstone Lake, in my opinion, was definitely magma. Same thing with the April 10th through 11th earthquake storm, which occurred right here, and the July 5th West Thumb event, which occurred right here, and that occurred on July 5th, 2018. The April 10th through 11th one occurred on 2018 as well. I was expecting this. I mean, I didn't predict it. By any means, I did not predict it. But I was expecting another earthquake storm to break out soon because it's just been too long, guys. It's been months since we've seen any type of rapid fire swarm with these characteristics at all. So let's go, let's see, let's just do this one right here. Let's go to the event page to see what the closest seismic station is. Now, I already know what the closest seismic station is because I already downloaded uh, the data to see where these earthquakes occurred. Since I saw this occur, oh, YDD. YDD was the closest station by 0.1 second arrival time. So, Borehole 944 and YDD are very close, but we're going to use YDD, shall we? Let's go up here, WY, YDD, 01, HHC. Now, you may be wondering, where the heck is YDD? It's very close to Borehole 944 on the shores of West Thumb Lake and Yellowstone. Notice if you look on here, you will not see YDD. Only people who download and look at seismic data will see it. And it's also on the University of Utah website, but for some reason it is not on is this thing on .org. So we got YDD01HHZ, we got the time frame, let's press the link, did it download? Yes it did. Let's look at this data in the seismic program swarm. Here we have the most recent data stream from station YDD at West Thumb Lake at Yellowstone Caldera. I have persistent rescale turned off, overlap set to 95. I'm going to enable a 0.8 hertz high pass filter to the 8th power since this is a broadband station which shows very low frequency micro seisms and I do not want those to show right now. Now we did see a little bit of an earthquake. I believe that's an earthquake. Looks like one. Uh, let me pan this down just a tad. Let's see after, after I'm seeing if there's any background tremor. Another possible earthquake right there. Very tiny. Little teeny 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 tiny guys all throughout here. Let's go up to the actual earthquake swarm, shall we? Let's see. It looks like there we did have two that were not reported just prior to the earthquake swarm. And here's the other one right here that was not reported. The first one was a 2.6. And notice how it slowly builds. Notice that? It builds and builds. And there's the 2.6. I believe this is it right here. Now let's zoom out and go to the spectrogram. And here we go. Normal high range frequencies. Station YLT, which is a little bit farther away, did show some lower frequencies. And that's to be expected since this kind of occurred uh, kind of far away from Station YLT. But YLT showed some dominant lower frequencies for this event right here. And I'm not seeing that on YDD, but you could tell multiple earthquakes blending to create a tremor-like event. It's not an actual tremor, but when multiple earthquakes occur in rapid succession over and over and over, sometimes they blend together to create tremor. That happens a lot. That's actually what is theorized uh, what volcanic tremor, not harmonic, but volcanic tremor, could be multiple low-frequency earthquakes occurring over and over and over and over. You can't space them apart, so they look like tremor. Now, this earthquake swarm started at, I'm going to say, let's go all the way back to these two right here. Um, 514 UTC. Now let's go all the way forward. This, here's the swarm starts, swarm starts. There it is, there it is, there it is. Keep going forward and then it starts to die down. But it's still ongoing. You notice there are many, many tiny earthquakes still occurring. Then we see another small burst in swarming just around 536 UTC. Keep going forward, keep going forward. We do see some more quakes, some more quakes, some more quakes. Not seeing any low frequency background tremor between 5 hertz to 1 hertz, which is a good sign. There's a little bit of something there, but uh, that, that might not be anything. Might be, might not, but can't really notice it at all. Now this right here, in my opinion, this looks like an electronic malfunction. That's in my opinion, but that could still be a very small earthquake. You never know. And then for the rest of the day, we saw many, 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 many tiny, tiny, tiny earthquakes. Very small, 
Very, very small. Then right down here, and you see in the Webby Core, you can see a bunch of shaking, guys. But on here, you don't. That's because there's a 0 0.8 hertz high pass filter, and teleseisms usually occur below that level. Now, this is a teleseism from the 6.2 in the Carlsberg Ridge. And uh, that looks like surface noise. Let's check out. Uh, yeah, that's definitely surface noise. And remember, this is not a borehole, guys. This is a surface station. Let's see. I'm not seeing any more quakes. Now, as of 12.54 p.m. Pacific Time, April 29, 2019, here's the most recent data stream right here. And, yeah, there's basically nothing. Basically nothing. So, all we had was the small burst in seismicity. It wasn't too small, but in regards to past rapid-fire swarms that have occurred at Yellowstone, it was pretty small. Because I've seen some pretty large ones, guys, especially April 10th through 11th, 2018, and July 5th, 2018, among many others. Now, I'm going to include the seismic audio to this earthquake swarm in just a second. Make sure you have your headphones ready. I suggest using headphones, but be wary of the in sudden increase in volume if it does occur. Just taking a last look at some of these real quick just to see... Let's see. There's no tremor, guys. I'm not really seeing any tremor at all. Not seeing much at all. Remember, seismic waves propagate away from their source like a ripple in a pond. So if you see something occur on only one station, 95% of the time it is not a real seismic event. However, there are exceptions here and there. Let's say there's not a dense network. There's not many stations around. It can still be real. Also, Steamboat Geyser. Steamboat Geyser only shows on one station. Sometimes it does show on YNR. Sometimes. Never shows on Borehole 950. But the surface waves from Steamboat are the only thing recorded by the seismic instruments themselves. So that's probably why right there. Again, largest earthquake of this swarm was magnitude 2.6. I will show the seismic audio in just a second. Again, here's the swarm. Let me zoom all the way out just so you can get a good look. Actually, wait. I forgot. I'm going to check the dominant frequencies of the largest event. Normal mid-range frequencies. It's not really a low-frequency earthquake. There are definitely strong frequencies going well beyond that. But mid-range frequencies mainly being below 10 hertz. Mainly. But you can obviously see it was not a low-frequency earthquake. So let's zoom all the way out. All the way out. Here's the entire swarm right here. There it is right there. Now let me go down to, let's try 1,000 amplitude count. Yeah, see, you can see all those earthquakes, all the amplitude cut. So that was it. Now I want to take just a quick look and see if there are any more earthquakes that have been reported while I have been recording. Because that happens all the time. I'll be done recording and then all of a sudden, sudden something interesting happens. That happens so often. You have no idea. So we had that swarm of Yellowstone. We looked at the North Carolina earthquake. There's a few more earthquakes occurring in Nevada, which personally I do believe, which I looked in the last video, I looked at some of the data from the earthquakes. There's no low-frequency background tremor, no low-frequency earthquakes. They do appear to be just normal high-frequency tectonic earthquakes, and they are striking along a bunch of faults. Of course, there are cinder cones and volcanoes in the area because the crust is very thin, so we can't rule out a magma intrusion or something related to magma. We cannot rule that out. But in my opinion... When looking at the seismic data, it does look tectonic in nature. If someone else out there says it's volcanic and they don't look at the seismic data, you know, yeah, yeah it could be volcanic. But you cannot back up your, uh, how do you back up your claims saying something's volcanic or saying something's tectonic when you don't even look at the seismic data? When you only look at the earthquake epicenters and you only look at what's nearby. You have to look at the waveform frequency data. You got to look at that. Otherwise, you won't understand the process that is taking place. Also, the GPS data helps a lot. Speaking of GPS data, I'm going to download the most recent data for OFW2, which resides near the Upper Geyser Basin at Yellowstone Caldera, near the second resurgent dome. I believe, oh gosh, Sour Creek Dome is near Yellowstone Lake, right? Oh, please forgive me if I'm wrong. I am getting backwards. Here, I got it. Yes, Sour Creek is up near Yellowstone Lake, and Mallard Lake is down near OFW2. OFW2 is actually right in the center, right here where the Upper Geyser Basin is. So let's go to the UNAPCO Web Services and download the text CSV data to look at uplift or subsidence and see what is occurring. OFW2, I use UNR now, and I use reference frame NA12 to get rid of the motion of the North American plate so we can see what's actually occurring. I'm going to do from January 1st, 2018, not 2019. 2018 to 
April 30th, 2019. I know it's not April 30th yet, but if you set a date that is ahead that hasn't happened yet, that will top it off. One sample is taken per day to remove errors and stuff like that. So one sample is taken per day, and we're going to create a scatter plot, much like is done on volcanoes.usgs.gov. Let's see, is it going to download? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yes, it does. Press OK. So here we are in Microsoft Excel from the data we just downloaded. And look right here, we have OFW2. And let's pull this over. Notice from January 1st, 2018. And the last sample was taken on April 27th, 2019. So we're going to get a good look at the uplift or subsidence. Remember, use Delta. STD Dev is mainly for seeing if there are errors. And it is detrended data. We do not want detrended. We need the trend data to see if there's ongoing uplift or ongoing subsidence. So use Delta U. Use this column right down here. Select the entire thing. And depending on the amount of data, it may take a minute or two. But that was quick because I only have like a year, a year and a half worth. Remember, one sample is taken per day. And we go up on Microsoft Excel. Press Insert. Press Scatter Plot. Select the first one. Notice it is very similar to the one that USGS uses on volcanoes.usgs.gov. It does look slightly different because I have a smaller data, data range, smaller time range than what they have. Now notice, I'm going to add a trend line right here. January 1st is right here of 2018. April 27th of 2019 is right here. Notice it has been sort of steady. Subsidence is continuing, as you can see right here. There have been some up and down movements here and there, but again, you can see subsidence is occurring. And if you download data from LKWY, WLWY, and HVWY, and especially NRWY, you will see subsidence is indeed still occurring at about a few millimeters per month. On the side, we have meters, always in meters. To find out the millimeters, you move the decimal point to the right three times. One, two, three. That'd be 60 millimeters. Remember, it doesn't show the actual level of the ground. It just shows the difference between values, which is what we need. So from here to here is 20 millimeters. That's a good amount for one horizontal section. So each horizontal section is 20 millimeters. So that's for OFW2 near the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome. Subsidence is still occurring, but I do believe that will change in the next two years at the max. I wholeheartedly believe that but I could still be wrong. Now I want to go back, just in case. Any more earthquakes? Uh, some more earthquakes in Cali. Let's zoom into Cali. Anything major? Eh, not really. Just some more swarming up here. A few earthquakes here and there, especially in Nevada. So now I'm going to show you the seismic audio to this earthquake swarm that we looked at in the seismic program swarm. The earthquake swarm only lasted for about an hour or so. So that's it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Let me know what you think, and I will be back soon. Please use your headphones for the following seismic audio. But be wary if the volume increases suddenly or whatever. So, hope you guys have a great day. Hope you like the following audio, which is taken from this station, by the way.